Statistics is the science of data. An important aspect of dealing with data is to organizing and summarizing the data in a way that's facilitated interpretation and subsequent analysis. And in this chapter, uh, we're going to discuss this aspect of statistics and uh, it's also formally called descriptive statistics. And in this chapter, actually, in the test book, it's chapter six. We'll, be, we'll cover numeric summary, then some graphic description of the data. And within the graphic description, including standard leaf, frequency distribution, the histogram, box plot, time sequence plot, and the probability plot. And today's topic is on the very first one is numerical summary of the data. And the learning objective for this chapter are as follows. First, we want to um, be able to compute and interpret the sample mean, sample variance, standard deviation, median, and means. We also want to learn how to explain the concept of sample mean variance, population mean, and the population variance and uh, construct and interpret the visual data display, including stem, leaf, display, histogram, box plot. And we also like to introduce the concept of random sampling, construct and interpret normal probability plot, and also how to use the box plot on the data display to virtually compile two or more sample, samples of data. Finally, we want to be able to learn how to use simple time series plot to visually display the important feature of time-oriented data. Numeric summary of the data. Basically, the data are the numeric observation of a phenomenon of interest. Uh, the totality of all observation is called population, and a portion of it used for analysis is called random sample, so it's part of the population. And we try, the goal is trying to gain understanding of the um, population or the whole collection. And those population possibly very massive. Um, and by means of describing it numerically and graphically, usually with the sample data. We describe the collection of um, in terms of the shape, the outlier, the center, and the spread. So that's the four aspects of the data distribution. The center is measured by the mean, and the spread or the dispersion is measured by the variance or standard deviation. So let's first look at the sample mean. What sample mean means is the, suppose we have an observation in the random sample and we denote the n sample as the x1 to xn. And the sample mean, sorry, the sample mean is basically the average. Of all the data. So from x1 to xn, you add all this up divided by the number of sample data, you get the sample mean. And uh, for the population, we usually assume we have capital N observations and denoted by X1 to Xn, type of capital N. And the population mean is analogs to the probability distribution as the, so we use the mu to represent the mean of the population. And uh, it's going to be the each individual data multiplied by uh, the data multiplied by the probability distribution function and do the summation of this. And the probability distribution function for the data we assume is usually we assume is normally or not normally or uniform distributed means every given data is equally likely to each other. So if you have at the end data in the population, then each one of them 
as 1 over n probability. So you add all this up, that's the population mean. So let's first look at sample mean. Uh, an example up here is showing on the, um, on the slide. So consider eight observations, x1 to x8, of core force from engine connector. And then we want to calculate the sample mean. In order to do that, you simply just add all these eight numbers and divide it by eight. We obtain the solution of 13 pounds. And using the data plot to show the data, we can see that the sample mean simply is the balance point of the overall data. So if you consider the bean is uh, unweighted and the data it simply means the, the, the density of the data simply means the mass of the of the, uh, the, the force acting on the beam. Then if you put the, the part right here, it's going to balance out the force acting on the beam. The variance is for the sample is defined as the averaged square distance. So if you have n observations in the sample from x1 to xn, the sample variance is calculated as x i minus the x bar, which is the sample mean. So the difference of these two numbers square out and uh, take the summation from throughout the whole sample from x1 to xn, you have a um, sum of the square distance from each individual data to the sample mean divided by n minus one. Here, the minus one is very important. So it's not simply just the average square distance is somewhat adjusted average distance. For a population with finite observations, capital N, so this population is a lot larger than the sample. The sample is part of it. And uh, assuming we can denote the capital N observation as x1 to x sub of n, the population variance is calculated as the square distance multiplied by the um, probability mass function fx. This fx again we assume is uniform distributed, so therefore fx is equal to 1 over n. So this way we'll be able to get the population variance and uh, it's also the variance of a probability distribution. So we are talking about the same thing. Yeah. And the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So here, um, in this class, we use sigma to representing the population standard deviation, while we use s, lowercase s, to represent the sample standard deviation. So one is for population, one is for the sample, and sample is part of the population. And we usually don't have the grasp of the population, but we are interested in the the property of the population. And in order to know the population property, we use the sample data to approximate it. So we usually use S to approximate And we use the sample in X bar to approximate the mu. So here is an example of computation of the sample variance. In this table here displays a quantity needed to calculate the sample variance, sample standard deviation. Suppose we have the, the data is again the eight sample forces needed to break the connector. Therefore, we have eight samples. So 
for xi was basically here, x1 to x8. And we also calculated the x bar by add all this together. The sum is 104 divided by 8. Here we end up having an x bar equal to 13. So using each individual xi minus x bar, we have this column, which is the difference between the xi and the sample mean x bar. So those difference are listed here, eight differences between each unit data and the sample mean. And the square distance is summarized in this column. So it's basically the, sum, the square of each individual differences in this column. And um, to calculate the sample variance, what we need to do is do the summation of the square distance and that is 1.6 here. And this time, in order to calculate sample variance, we're not going to divide by 8. Instead, we divide by n minus 1 is 8 minus 1 is 7. We calculate the different variance as 1.6 divided by 8. That by 7, we have 0.2286. And the standard deviation is the square root of this number, 0.48. And pay attention to the dimension of the, each quantity for each xi, which the sample is in the unit of pound. And the mean, since the average of the xi does have the same um, dimension as pounds, while the variance is the square distance. So there's a square here. So therefore, the variance have a unit of pound square. And the standard deviation, since you take the square root, you come back to pound. So the standard deviation has the same unit as the, the quantity described by the sem, uh, random variable. And the desired accuracy is generally accepted to be one more place than the data. So if you are interested in to, to uh, you see here, when you calculate the x bar, to keep two decimal uh, two significant digits up to decimal point same thing apply to the standard deviation and the computation of the um, sample variance as square we just demonstrated so the s square of sample variance is calculated here is by dividing the summation of the square distance by the n minus one uh, which later we'll call it as a degree of freedom. So there's another way to calculate the S square sample variance uh, shortcut, and the derivation is shown in this um, slide. And I'm not going to go into details about the derivation. I just uh, point out the, the conclusion. The conclusion is that in order to calculate the sample variance, usually if you use the definition which is the very first row, the definition is the square distance, average square distance, therefore, of the each individual data to the sample mean. Therefore, you need to first calculate the sample mean before you calculate the sample variance. And in the shortcut, you don't have to do that. So what you need to do is to simply do two summations. One summation is the summation of the square of each individual data. The other summation is the summation of all the data. And the, this summation has to be squared. So you, you either square it first and do the summation, or you do the summation first and square the summation. But the square summation should be divided by n, and the difference is going to be divided by n minus 1 to get the sample variance. As an example, so the same set of data. This time, what we do to obtain the sample variance like this, so you have all the x i's listed here. Then, if you use Excel, you can easily propagate the um, function of x i to the next column. So each individual x is squared and put on this column. So these are all the x i squared. 
and then we do the summation of these two. The xi summation is equal to 1.4, while the summation of all the xi squares is equal to 1,363.6 to here. And with these two numbers, we can plug into the formula and get the sample variance like this. So this square, the sum of the square is right here, the first item. And the second square, our uh, second summation will be squared and divided by the number of sample data divided by eight. And uh, the difference of these two will be, divide, will be divided by the degree of freedom, which is seven. So you end up with the sample variance equal to 0.2286. And take the square root, you get the sample standard deviation. So you end up with the same result using either one of the, the formula. This one is more um, easily to construct it using uh, Excel. So why we are dividing the sample variance to, to, to gain the sample variance, we need to divide it by n minus one instead of n. The population variance is calculated with the um, divided by capital N, which is a population size, but why isn't the sample variance calculated with N instead of N minus one? That's because the true variance is based on the data deviation from the true mean, mu, while the sample calculation is based on the data deviation from the X bar, not the mu. So the, we approximate the mu with the X bar. The X bar is the estimator of the mu close but not the same. So the n minus one divisor is used to compensate for the error in the mean estimation. So the mean was not perfect. Therefore, you want to compensate the difference. We use n minus one to gain the sample variance. And there's another uh, explanation here. We describe the n minus one, the sample variance is Calculate with quantity n minus one, and this quantity is called degree of freedom. So you've heard of this a lot in the statistics. So that's a very important concept. Usually, you say you have n data, and uh, when you calculate the uh, standard deviation or the differences or the uh, dispersion, you have you have freedom of n minus one. The origin of the term. The end deviation from the x bar in the sample. So x so x1 minus x bar, x2 minus x bar, x3 n minus x bar. So if you have n numbers, you have n differences or deviations. And um, the other important um, cons um, conclusion is that the summation of all the deviations is equal to zero. Because you, you sum up all the xi's, you end up with the summation. And this summation is n multiplied by the x bar because x bar itself is, um, is the average. So it's the summation divided by n. So that can be easily derived. So the, the sum of the summation and deviation is zero. Therefore, there's only n minus y independent the observation can be freely determined. And the, the final one, the last, uh, observation is fixed to maintain the zero sum. So to give you a better idea about what, what, what do we mean by that, let's look at the x i minus x bar here. In this column, if I know seven of them, seven of the eight, let's say, without knowing the overall the data, if I somehow uh, block one of the data set, say, I don't know what's the, what's x i minus, uh, x four minus x five is. I take this data out, uh, scratch it out, and I only give you the rest of the seven x i minus x bar. And um, suppose I also take in this column out, and I want you to fill out this, this, um, uh, box, what's the value of x i minus x by the fourth column? 
you can actually derive that number by assuming um, so the the condition is that those numbers x i minus x phi you add all this together summation is always equal to zero so so one unknown solve it so only seven of them are independent this apply not only to this one you can actually block any one of it and you'll still be able to estimate that number that's what it means so only seven of this difference or uh, distance is independent final one is derived and that's where the degree of freedom come from and this degree of freedom used as a divider to obtain the sum of uh, the sample variance. And uh, the sample range is another important concept. If you have any observations in the sample and you know it from X1 to Xn, the sample range is simply the largest observation maximum among all the Xi's minus the, the minimum, the smallest observation. It is the difference will give you a number, and this number is called the sample range. For example, in the data, um, in the previous example, data of the largest one is 13.6 um, of force, but the smallest one is 12.3, so the difference is 1.3. So the, therefore, the sample range is equal to 1.3, and this is also very important um, numerically descriptive of the dispersion, so the wider the range is, usually the, the more spread out the data is. And also, please note that the population range is always greater or equal to the sample range because the, the maximum within the population is definitely larger than the maximum within the sample, or minimum has to be equal because the population covers the sample. So the range should be also greater or higher, greater or equal to the sample range. With the end of this um, part, 